Yeah, good morning. Welcome to episode 4 of our current creating mods tutorial for Starfield. My name is uh, Creators and I am a modder on the uh, currently Starfield Nexus, but I also create mods uh, or have created mods for other games, including the Iron Special Edition. And today, in this episode, we're going to delve into scripting in JPEGs. Okay? And what I want to achieve is uh, uh, adding inventory slash carry weight information to our scanner hub. And I did something similar for Skyrim Special Edition, as you can see here. Uh, the mod is named Expanded Controls, and basically what it does, it is adding extended, extended features to the Favorites menu. The reason for that was quite easily the Favorites menu uh, uh, was opening extremely fast, and it was very streamlined in comparison to uh, any other uh, any of the other menus. And basically, so I was using the Favorites menu as short one-stop info hut, I'd say. So I just pressed the key, and then I had all the information available in one menu that I had to browse uh, various other menus before. Okay, so and as you can see, it also adds the inventory carry weight information, and it also had a feature where you could uh, bind hotkeys and different other keys from inside the vanilla settings menu. So you wouldn't need an MCM for this mod. So that's basically uh, about the background, what we want to achieve today. Uh, and also, as you can see here, I also want to give that uh, particular uh, inventory weight information a color transformation, because uh, in episode two, I already showed you how to colorize the health bar and the jet booster and whatnot. And I want to do the same for the carry weight. The only difference here is the carry weight is not a bar. And I'm going to show you how to create a bar or meter in a future episode as well. But what I want to do is a clear number, an integer, like we say, or int, okay, int. And basically, how did I get uh, access to that uh, uh, color transform information. I was just browsing. Uh, wait, I believe it was the inventory menu. I'm not sure. I believe it was the inventory menu and was just browsing for the correct import, which basically said flash geom color transform. And then it brought me to the Adobe wiki, script wiki, and then you uh, get all the information on uh, transforming uh, text, uh, color transforming text in ActionScript. So basically, what I did was uh, uh, copy pasting that script block and customizing it inside JPEGs for my needs. And for that script, you want to refer to episode two of my tutorial series because we need a text. Uh, of course, not in the inventory menu. We want to have that in <laughs> in our scanner menu, which is the monocle menu SWF. Okay, that's the one that we want to have. And you want to uh, refer to episode two and create a text, like you learned in that video. And my text is named uh, inventory weight uh, slash carry weight IWCW. And uh, don't forget the CM text settings. Okay, like I showed you in episode two, one two. And then you want to put that text into your custom sprite. Uh, uh, make sure that it is not placed on the last instance, but uh, the one instance before. And as you know, when you define a sprite or text or whatever, it will always auto-apply uh, the next free ID. And if you put in your custom sprite, make sure that you have the correct depth. I already showed you that in episode two. Your, uh, um, depth is basically the position in that ladder. Okay, so you make sure that it is in the correct uh, depth position. And your uh, custom sprite will have the name flag, the matrix and character flag set, and then you give it a, a descriptive name string. My, my one is named payload tf, and uh, uh, slash tf is basically the terminology that the vanilla files are already uh, using. And as you can see here, uh, it's mc. mc is for movie uh, uh, content or movie clip, I, I think it is, and tf is for text file or text format. Okay, so just want to keep that uh, slash uh, uh, format on your uh, string name, and mine is named payload, and for the carry weight, you can name it carry weight, inventory weight, weight, whatever, encumbrance, whatever you want to uh, name it. Just make sure that you uh, label it tf and mc so you can tell the difference that it's a movie or a text file. And then you want to uh, put that custom sprite at the first frame on the last position of the final uh, defined sprite inside the monocle menu so that it will show up uh, on the last instance, okay? And I already showed you that in episode 2, so you press pause now, you do your job, and come back when you're done, because then we will continue skipping, okay? There you go. And back we are. Man, you're, you're fucking fast. <laughs> you're the fastest, fastest uh, uh, JPEGs editor I've ever seen. I can't believe that you're that fast. However, let's go. So, uh, the first thing that you need is adding your custom color transformation script. And it's not basically the first thing you need, but you do that first because uh, we will import information into the uh, monocle menu script. And if uh, your custom script doesn't exist by that, you will get a comp compile error. So the first thing that you want to do is adding your custom script. And how do you do that? Right-click scripts, add a class, make sure it's on existing do ABC, and then you uh, do your naming. And the first instance uh, is your package name. So the folder name, the uh, package name here, okay? Then you uh, say dot, and then you give it your uh, script name. For me, that's UI hot color transform, okay? Okay, you do that, you have your custom script now, then you open it, and, as I already said, I uh, took that script as an example, took all the things away that I didn't need, uh, um, basically you just need the color transform uh, import, nothing else, okay? Then you keep the superstructure uh, declaration or a function, and, which is not necessarily the same here on, uh, on the website, but uh, you want to do that because every other action script in uh, the vanilla files does it, it always has that super declaration, you want to do that as well. Then you have your uh, get the transform color information, that's basically just where you uh, declare your... Uh, where you pull the information how to color transform from your uh, flash geom color transform uh, import so that you have the fu function uh, working without needing to directly reference that script and then we have our condition here our uh, condition function which says uh, on 100% uh, if, if carry if inventory weight exceeds 100% of the carry weight then uh, return uh, condition 2 and if it has 80% return condition 1 and if uh, anything else is not return condition 0 so basically that's uh, if you're full that's if you're almost full and that's if you're completely filled up change the color okay that's what that script does uh, uh, maybe i'm going to put that script on uh, uh, can't remember on the website right now, but I'm probably going to do that so that you can easily copy-paste it and uh, um, 
but you can also write it. If you want, you can write it. Okay, so that's your script, then you do saving, and then you go to the Monaco menu, and you don't need to care about the imports. And I'm going to Notepad++ now, because it's more easy to show you that in Notepad++, and there's another tip incoming here. For uh, uh, Notepad++, you can download the Compare plugin. Okay, I already have it installed uh, here, where it says Compare Plus. There's another uh, instance uh, that, said, that just says Compare version 2.0. You want to install it, and then you can use the Compare function to compare two scripts. And that's basically, on the left one is basically the vanilla script, as labeled up here, and that is my script. There you can see what has been changed in the Monocle menu uh, script. So basically, that's my custom uh, script import. That's my uh, property declaration of the payload movie clip. So, this one, okay? This one. Ah, uh, I'm wrong, this one. The movie clip, okay? And the text file. And then you're having the event subscription, which I pulled from the actual inventory menu script. Uh, inventory menu. Uh, where is it? On fire, forget. See how I'm doing that? I'm just browsing uh, through the uh, existing flash files and try to find that uh, specific event call. There you go, there we have it. BSU, data you just need to copy and paste that, okay? That's the whole event subscription. Okay, just subscribe to that. So that basically this menu understands, uh, that the monocle menu understands, hey, I want to uh, pull uh, the player inventory data event information into my uh, uh, menu, okay? And then you have your customized uh, uh, on player inventory update function, which is also pulled from the inventory menu uh, SWF. And it's customized. Yeah, and then you can see on that function block on inventory update, uh, and I customized that for my script, or I believe I, uh, I remember I pulled it actually from the container menu, but you can uh, take it from the inventory menu just as well. And there you can already see the variables that you need, uh, player inventory, data, and uh, encumbrance, and max encumbrance. And then you just pull out that particular information. And what does that mean? For me, uh, especially that meant hours, literally, uh, not only hours, fiddles, days around uh, what exactly, because we have obfuscated variable naming here, okay? And you have to replace that with either custom uh, variable names or already existing uh, variable names used by the game. And you can never say, because it's not uh, correctly uh, decompiled in JPEG, you can never say, is that now a custom variable uh, made by the Bethesda team, or is it, a, is it a variable already existing on any of the Flash imports, you know? You can say that, because you don't have access to the source. If uh, we would have uh, access to the Flash doors, we would not get all those uh, log3, log2, log1 uh, vari uh, variable declarations, okay? We would have clear names, yeah? And that's a guessing game, and it's basically just fiddling around. You, you, you try a new uh, variable, you rename the variable, then you go into the game, see what it does, and at one point, you nail the correct terminology. And uh, um, I've done that basically by browsing through dozens of uh, scripts, and uh, at one point, I figured, okay, that's the variable that you want to use. And basically, you pull out those uh, function uh, variables and uh, function conditions and stuff like that, and then you build your custom script from it. Okay, and for me, it then looked uh, like that. I declare uh, the encumbrance as uh, integer, and pull the actual uh, encumbrance information from the game, and the max encumbrance the same. Then we have our... Uh, text formation, which is a global function. You can find that anywhere, it's um, uh, virtually anywhere on any of the action scripts within inside the vanilla files. Then we have our color condition variable pulled from our custom script, see? And then we have the switch of that, uh, the case switch, which basically is uh, an improved version of if blocking, I'd name it, uh, um, to switch to that specific color if any of the cases is true, like we declared in our custom script file, see? Case two, case one, case zero, and there you go again and have, if case true, then you have that color. If case one, then you have the color. If case two, then you have the color. And one particular thing I need to mention here, because these are not the correct color codes, okay? I pulled those color codes from a, I just Googled, and it was the we, uh, W3Schools HTML color picker, and my search was color hex code, okay? And then I just uh, wanted a red, or orange, an orange, and uh, icy blue. And then you have the hex code, and then you want to enter that hex code like this. So uh, this, this is the blue color, which is that one. And you want to enter the hex code like this, zero, multiplied, and then your hex code, and make sure it's uh, written in big letters like that. So and when you save your script in JPEGs, this is what JPEX is making out of it, okay? So you want to use hex code, but JPEX is uh, turning it into this number, uh, these numbers, if you are compiling, if you're saving your script, okay? Here you can also see uh, my text that I was already using on my uh, text tag, and that's where it's actually injecting the color transformation into my movie clip, and uh, um, this is how you reference the text uh, file inside my movie clip by saying payload uh, underscore mc dot payload underscore tf, okay? So that's basically, I'm going to upload those two uh, script snippets that I was showing you to uh, that website that I can't remember, but you probably know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, and that's also a thing that I need to mention. You can see that this has changed here yeah, in comparison to, that's basically just because I was importing uh, uh, the Flash Geom color transform. See? And it was modifying that, and the same is true uh, for the new frame string here. So that's that's just happening. If you change something, import something, that's what JPEX is doing. It's uh, It shouldn't be happening, but it also doesn't do any damage, so that's not a problem. So, and, of course, you do not export the script and write it in Notepad. I just showed you that in Notepad++ for comparison to the vanilla files, so you can better see what I've done and get an idea of what I've done, okay? so. Color transform uh, uh, code on the Action Scripts 3 3.0 reference for Adobe Flash platform, okay? Just um, probably want to favorize that website so you can, uh, so you have access to it. That's where you have your colors again. I believe in episode 2 I already provided that information. And you've built your custom script, okay? And then you go to the Monaco, Monaco menu and go to Edit Action Script. 
and you don't need to care about the imports. Uh, JPEX is automatically importing anything that you reference. Okay, you don't need to care about because if you try to first, like you would do it in Papyrus, and actually I have to point that out here, the action script is very close to how Papyrus uh, script is working. And basically, if you first try to import uh, uh, or extend, like we say in Papyrus, and then save, it will just uh, obfuscate that import, like it never existed. So you don't need to care about the imports. Uh, 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 JPEX is automatically importing your custom script file once you press save. So then we have our uh, property declaration, which was a uh, payload MC for me, which is that. Uh, Movie clip here, okay, which we embedded into the mainframe. Then we have our, uh, wait, our event description, subscription here, yeah, player inventory data on player inventory update. That's the custom naming. You can, because if you go back to inventory, you can see it says on inventory update, pulled from client data, and you have player inventory data as a string declaration, and then you can customize this here as well, you know. Doesn't really matter if you name it like that. And I believe the difference here is if you say on player inventory update, it will actually mimic the behavior of the container. And if you just say on inventory update, it will mimic the behavior of the inventory uh, menu. But that's not really a difference. It doesn't really matter <clears throat> because it's one of the same information. They probably just uh, give it a different name here so that they don't overlap or whatever. I'm not sure <clears throat> why they did it like that. Okay, so the event subscription and then you and mind the position. Okay, so it's on the on added stage. On added stage is basically saying in it. Like in, uh, in in Papyrus, I would always um, name the initialization block in it, okay, and that's what on added to stage is doing. And uh, 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 the properties in Papyrus they are named uh, properties. I don't, I'm not exactly sure how they are named in ActionScript. You put them up here. So inside the class uh, declaration, okay, and then we have our custom. Uh, where is it? Man, I'm the wrong script, right? Yeah. So and there we have our custom uh, 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 script function. And make sure it's private so that it will only uh, work on this specific menu so you don't have any overlaps or something like that no and as i said i will upload that script just show you what, and then, uh, what you uh, what we are doing here with that script and then you're saving and make sure to use the correct text colors and then we're saving the script and that's basically all there is that's the whole major magic okay it will perfectly save that for you if not let me know i'm going to help you uh, in, in, in the comments and now we're going to go into the game and i'm going to show you how it looks Okay, so here we are on Luna, and now we open up the scanner, and if you look to the lower left uh, uh, widget group, you see in red my custom uh, carry weight uh, edition, okay? So it says uh, 594 slash 205, and let me just put some of that stuff away. Okay, see now it's orange, because it's not exceeding uh, uh, the overall inventory weight, uh, carry weight, and if I uh, uh, put away even more stuff, and lower it even under 80%, it will go blue, okay? It will go blue uh, because uh, I want to put it on the lower uh, position of that widget, of the left group widget. And that's the last, you see? That was a super trick, that's a hotkey bound. Uh, yeah, let me quickly show you that off. That's my uh, hotkey setup, because you can use hotkeys in the game, hot, uh, console hotkeys in the game. Basically, wait, let me quickly on my second monitor, see? That's my... Hockey setup. So I have a show bar menu for my companion. I have a cloud container. I can execute uh, my auto exec, which has uh, some uh, variables declared. Player equip item is uh, that is the fist. That is the crew menu. This is, this is what you've just seen. A quick exit the game. QQQ. Turn off collision. Turn on toggle collision. Then you have workshop menu. You have the photo menu on a hockey. Uh, that is subtitles. This is uh, ambient music. This is flycam. This is toggling all menus. Virtually really any menu. Then I have an auto save hockey. And I auto execute is. Basically, as you can just do, uh, see, it, it, it allows fast traveling when you are over encumbered, and uh, uh, the difficulty uh, on, on my, uh, uh, the setup on my difficulty level, very hard, is 2.0, so it's basically doubled damage for me and my uh, uh, adversaries, okay? So for the NPCs and for me, which basically creates more intense and quick battles. <clears throat> Okay, so that's uh, now that is the last piece of information that I wanted to show you now. You know now how to uh, apply scripts and how to build scripts. It's basically like in Papyrus, you can write them, but what I always do is, uh, I would do that for Skyrim as well, I'm just browsing the vanilla scripts, pull out snippets, and then put them into my custom scripts or uh, into the sections where I want to add something. And that's how, and then you just fiddle around, does it work or does it not work? Okay, so some of the information I gave you I already knew because it's similar or uh, almost the same like it was in Skyrim and Fallout 4. And so I knew a bit of my way, but still I had to fiddle, especially in that custom on player inventory update function. I had to fiddle a lot because of the color transformation. I wanted to get that done and it was a hell of a ride because I never used color transform before. And I was trying that in Skyrim, I remember, like months and I couldn't get it done. And then it's like we say in German, dann ist es mir wie Schuppen von den Augen gefallen, what basically means uh, it fell, uh, um, which basically translated in English means uh, I was running around blind, but now I can see. Okay, and it just worked at one point. And I was like, Horeka, yeah, and great, and everything is good. And yeah, build your custom scripts. You know how to do that. Pull information from existing scripts, build your own script uh, uh, functions, blocks, and so. But you have to fiddle around. You have to test into game in the game, and not only quick tests and then releasing on the Nexus. You have to uh, test it uh, for extended period. I was testing this for two weeks until I finally could say, okay, it's not crashing the game or it's not bugging out the game. And now I can make a release and show you in the tutorial. And there's that one last instance of information that I wanna uh, give you here. 
because as you uh, as you've seen in game it's not really in the best position because i want to have it on the lower part of the widget and i was using a font size of 10 because it should be small okay you can maybe even aim for it because we do not have a lot of uh, space available at that lower section and uh, uh, as you can see in my custom sprite i was using the scaling but not the translation and in the mainframe edition i was using uh, the translation but not the scaling so uh, if you put uh, uh, six five five three, uh, three six into uh, the scaling it basically says uh, use the scaling that i was using in the original uh, uh, sprite object okay that's what it's telling the game so you set the scale here and you set the translation here and why do you want to set the translation because you anchor your custom sprite to the main so anything all the coordinates all the translation coordinates are relative to that main sprite okay that's why you want to do the translation here and the scaling here because if you do the scaling here it will uh, interact with the main uh, frame and you don't want to have that so and basically what i want to do uh you've seen how big uh, you've seen the size of my uh, custom edition and by that i can predict it's maybe okay if you just make it 10 percent smaller and for 128 it's 12.8 uh, makes it one one six one five eight one one five eight right one one oh, like that i think okay save it and for the translation we want to put it a little bit lower and it's on the epsilon we have to increase that number i'd say let's try with a thousand save save go in the game again and that's also showing you how do you fiddle <laughs> you know how uh, i already stated in episode three and two fiddling is the prof professional way of doing things it's totally legit i'd say it's actually professional IT terminology, fiddling. You fiddle around until it breaks. Mod it till it breaks, okay? So, and now we see where that thing is displayed. Okay, so we have to put it even lower. But I'm not going to film that video, I'm just going to do it one last time. So we have to put it on 20,000, I'd say. Or let's say 20,000. That's the last time I'm going to try this. And basically fiddling in that case means you uh, go into the game, see where it is, and go out and uh, modify in the translation. And then at one point it will be exactly where you want it. And the same is true for the scale. Okay, and basically, that's about it. You learned how to add script or build script or get the information how to build script, how to fiddle around to make a script work in JPEG because it's not... Uh, if you have actual access to uh, creativity... Oh, now it's all the way down. <laughs> yeah, so you, you can see it's all the way down on the very lower part of the screen. So that's, that's what I mean. You have to fiddle around and I'm not going to fill the video with that uh, fiddling around. But that's what I'm saying, okay? So if you have, if you have access to creativity suit or flex, it's much more easy because all the flash source isn't uh, obfuscated. It's all open to you to read and you don't have the problems that you're having with JPEGs. I probably still prefer JPEGs in the future because if you learn the quirks around this uh, editor, uh, it's much more easy to use and everything will happen much more faster than it does in creativity or whatever. However, you learned what you want to do. I'm going to upload the script snippets, okay? And basically, making a script is the same as in Papyrus. You, you, you have your imports or your extensions for the class or your script file, uh, which is referencing already existing script files. Then you have your properly, proper, property declaration. Then you have your event subscription or your function description or whatever you want to name it. And you have your custom function, okay? So, and that's basically about it. And uh, um, by browsing through all the various menus, you can figure out all the data that you need, you know? Like, I don't know, there, there's so much. Just, just go into the game, find an information that you want to have, like, I don't know what comes to mind, skill level, experience level, or something like that, or uh, position on the map, you can pull that. You, you can pull virtually everything outside of the already existing menu files and build your custom scripts, and the way you would do that, you would ba basically just mimic this function block here and exchange the variables with the already in-game. So that's your custom declaration here, and those are the actual uh, parameters defined by the engine, okay? So these are that you want to find, and then you just uh, declare that variable here, and blah, blah, blah. That's how it's done. You can pull literally any information, and with a uh, custom sprite creation, you can place it on any uh, uh, already existing sprite, and you can even go as far as creating your own custom menus by just, I'd say, copy-paste the small menu, and then put your sprites in, and then add it to a hotkey, like I've already showed you, because we have a console command that says open menu, and then you have a hotkey which you can open that menu with, and you can place all the stuff in this custom uh, menu. This is uh, totally uh, within range of options, and you don't even need any access to source like we had in Skyrim with SkyUI. You know? So that's basically about it. I hope you learned something. The next episode, we will get a, bit, a little bit deeper into scripting, because I want to show you how to add a ini and a translation localization file, so that you can translate uh, your hot or your UI mod for anyone, uh, for any language in the world, and an ini for custom settings, like, I don't know, want to pick a color, want to pick a position, want to pick a, a, a scale, whatever you want. That's uh, the, the, uh, the topic of the next episode. Until then, I hope you learned something. See you around next time. My name is Creators. I'm out. Goodbye.